Hello everyone, it's the Sister Roland and all I need is a few minutes to go over Proverbs 31. Um, we all know the Proverbs, the Proverbs 31 woman and we've read it over and over before and people have done messages on this. But I, this was the first time that I heard it being read in the Passion, the Passion Translation. So, and I was like, wow, that, I didn't understand it like that. I didn't see it in that way. So, we're going to read it to see if you are a Proverbs 31 woman, if I am a Proverbs 31 woman. Oh, but before we get into the child, I have to address this because um, somebody who's an avid drinker told was going back and forth with me. Well, not going back and forth. I don't go back and forth with stuff like this. But he did tr- show me this verse to justify his drinking where it says uh, in Proverbs 31, 6 through 7, strong drink is given to the terminally ill who are suffering at the brink of death. Why it is for those in depression in order to drown their sorrows? Let them drink and forget their pov- poverty and misery. So, um, he, yeah, they try to justify that, you know, this is why you should drink. But if you remember, remember this was if this is what King Lemuel said, his royal words of wisdom at that time. They had to do stuff like that because the Holy Spirit was not there. This is why in the Bible, in the New Testament, it says, do not be filled with strong drink, but be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit can help you if you are, um, you know, in, in certain situations, the Holy Spirit is your helper. And it can help you in whatever ways it sees fit. Everybody is different. Every situation is different, of course. Sorry for going on that tangent. I had to address that. Uh, can, uh, but let's get ourselves. So it's going to start at 157. So here it says in Proverbs 31 verses 10, it starts is the radiant bride. Verse 10, who could ever find a wife like this one? She's a woman of strength and mighty valor. She's full of wealth and wisdom. The price paid for her was greater than many jewels. So you are priceless. Verse 11, her husband has entrusted his heart to her. So you got your, you got your husband's heart, which a lot of women cannot say for she brings him the rich spoils of victory. Verse 12, all throughout her life, she brings him what is good and not evil. Hmm. You're supposed to bring good and good, not evil to your husband, especially to your family. Also verse 13, she searches out continually to possess. So she's always looking for opportunities, you know, to own things. That which is pure, no, excuse me, that which is pure and righteous. So she wants, she she searches out to possess not only uh, material stuff, but things that uh, uh, money can't buy, like character, morals, and values. That's that's what that's talking about. (laughs) She delights in the work of her her hands. So whatever she's doing as a job or to bring in money, she delights in it. It's not something like she has to do. She has no choice, but whatever it is, you know, she enjoys doing what she does. Verse 14, she gives out revelation truth to feed others. So other people can reap from this woman's wisdom. She is like a trading ship bringing divine supplies from the merchant. So you never know what is, you know, when a ship comes, you don't know what is in there, but it's filled with goodies. Verse 15, even in the night season, she arises and sets food on the table for hungry ones in her house and for others. So she, she, you know, make sure everybody is good in her family, you know, make sure they belly full and plus for other people. Verse 16, she sets her heart upon a field and takes it as her own. She labors there to plant the living vines. So, you know, she buys a field and then she also takes care of it too. She's able to, she knows what to do to buy a field, you know, the the negotiations and everything, looking for it. And plus how to take care of that field so it can bring her, um, so it can bring her funds, to bring her family funds. So that's a, I mean, all around woman. Verse 17, she wraps herself in strength might and power in all her works 
verse 18, she tastes an experience of better substance and her shining light will not be extinguished no matter how dark the night. So she tastes experience of better substance and her shining light will not be so there may be things that may come to, you know, extinguish her lights, you know, bad news, a bad deal, a betrayal, a sickness or whatever. But this lady is so uh, um, into what her family, into investing in herself and um, pouring into herself, making herself better, that when those dark nights do come, they, it, it cannot extinguish her light. So she has something that she holds on. She has um, barriers. She has things that she has set up so those things don't take out her light. So that's something to um, that's something to be admired. Verse 19, she stretches out her hands to help the needy, and she lays hold of the wheels of government. So she helps the needy, and plus she is, she is influential in whether it's her city, her, you know, province, you know, whatever they call them stuff back in those days. Verse 20, she is known by her extravagant generosity to the poor, for she always reaches out her hands to those in need. So she extravagantly gives to the poor. Not like I've seen people like, I've seen people who you can tell they have money. And then if a homeless person asks them for money, sometimes they throw them. I don't understand why people do that. Just don't give the person the money. But I've seen people just throw the money on a homeless person. I've seen that many times. But this lady extravagantly gives to, uh, um, to the poor. So if she's giving them food, she does, she, you know, prepares. She doesn't uh, uh, um, make it any type of way. Because I, um, this church I used to, um, well, when they used to treat the poor at that time, they would go out and buy the uh, um it was like they having a party. They would buy cake and sodas and, and they would fix the plate so nicely for the homeless people. That's why when the homeless people would see it's their uh, um, time of the week come, they everybody would come out because they know they're going to serve them so well. So this is what this lady did. She, whatever she does, she's giving them money. She gives them extravagantly, feed them extravagantly. She doesn't, you know, do it in a sense to demean them. In, a, in, in that way so verse 21 she is not afraid of tribulations for all her household is covered in the dual garments of righteousness and grace so whatever tribulation might that may come away doesn't mean, see it doesn't mean that you're never going to have tribulations and problems when it comes she's not going to be afraid because she has set up stuff you know whether it's a financial tribulation whether it's an emotional you know a physical a spiritual she has stuff she's she is she's already built for that she's already prepared for that you know you know just in case what if this happens what if my husband loses his job what if uh, um this deal don't don't go through what if something happens to the kids she's set up stuff to um counteract those things verse 22 her clothing is beautifully knit together at a purple gown of exquisite linen. Verse 23, her husband is famous and admired by all, sitting at, as the vener, venerable judge of his people. So, because he has a good wife, you know, who's there to support him, he's able to, you know, help in the community, uh, in his community. Um, verse 24, and plus the lady is not behind it because I know they have this famous quote um, behind every good uh, man is a good woman. A woman is not supposed to be behind a man. The woman is in front of the man because the man is supposed to cover the woman, you know, uh, um, in a sense. But you're supposed to lead in the, uh, um, the man supposed to lead the woman. Of course, you know, um, back as he's leading. But in a sense, how they trying to put it is, you know, it's the woman that is in the back of him making him breach no not in that sense we working together in some instance i'm in front of you some instance i'm in the back of you because you're leading some instances i'm on the side of you because we're working together so a woman is in di all different positions so that's why you are help meet so wherever you need wherever that you there's help needed whether it's front back or whatever that's where that woman's supposed to be honorable because I just sneak and look uh, on Google while I was doing this. So, so that's somebody who's highly respected because of their age and wisdom and stuff like that. That's what it said. That's what the dictionary said. Verse 24. 
Even her works of righteousness, she does for the benefit of her enemies. So she's not going to do stuff because, you know, she knows this, this, this group of people don't like her and say, oh, I'm going to, uh, um, they're going to make 60 people. I'm just going to bring stuff for 50 people so they don't get anything or to show off, to show off in front of her enemies. No, she does it for the benefit of her enemies. That's the Proverbs 31 woman. Hmm. Something to think about, child. I don't know if I would. I don't like that yet. Verse 25. Bold power and glorious majesty are wrapped around her. And she laughs with joy over the latter days. So she's filled with joy. Not happiness. Because happiness is um, dependent on your circumstance. But joy, no matter what's going on, you, you have joy. Verse 26. Her teachings are filled with wisdom and kindness. As loving instruction pours from her lips. So wisdom and kindness. <sighs> and then sometimes kindness may not always be that you say, oh, sweetie, baby, honey, sugar pie and thing. But, you know, I say it in, those, in a sense not to be condescending on demeaning, but I'm telling you the truth. And sometimes the truth hurts. No matter how you try to put it, um, the truth will um the truth hurts because it requires change. Of course. Verse 27. She watches over the ways of her household and meets every need they have. Verse 28. Her sons and daughters arise in one accord to extol her virtues. And her husband arises to speak of her in, a, in glowing terms. So her sons and daughters. You know, if you have a son or you have daughter or you have all them. All of them come together and... Um, talk about you know the different characteristics that she has the different uh, uh, um ways that she is so her, her kids are not bashing her and saying oh you never it was there for me or you're not a good mom or whatever all of them stand up and say what a great mama she is and plus her husband speaks of her in a good um in a good way too verse 29 there are many valiant and noble ones, but you have ascended above them all. Verse 30, charming can be, charm can be misleading. Very true, because some people that are charming, they have their own agendas. And beauty is vain and so quickly fades. Hmm, that's very true. So you can't just go only on beauty, people who picking people, um, people just on beauty and handsomeness. It's quickly fades but this virtuous woman lives in the wonder awe and the fear of the lord and that's how you get wisdom because this lady is her her words are filled with this wisdom it says that the uh, um the fear of the lord is the beginning of wisdom because when you fear god it's certain things hey i can't do this i can't say this because i have the fear of the lord so this woman is a woman of god she will be praised throughout eternity eternity so even if she were to leave this earth there still would be people years down the line talking about how they she touched their lives how she changed the, their lives and different things like that so verse 31 so go ahead and give her the credit that is due that's give honor to whom honor due give the person their flowers that's what y'all would say so go ahead and give her the credit that is due. Give the person, give this type of woman her flowers. Even if she's not all the way there, but give her her flowers. If she's done being good to you, give her her flowers right now. For she has become a radiant woman and all her loving works of righteousness deserve to be admired at the ghetto ways of every city. So when you read this, you see some like me, I have a lot of work to do to become really come from proper 31 woman. But the thing is, you're supposed to strive each and every day to be that woman. And then Proverbs 31, uh, Proverbs 31 woman is subjective. So that's, um, you know, whatever. Some things, you know, you probably can't do that because you may already have a strained relationship with children. You may already have a strained relation with your husband or whatever you may not be married and stuff like so that you just try to be the best version of yourself and to be you know everybody that comes in contact with you so they come on say wow um that encounter with you changed my life you know you a word that you said a smile that you give you know uh you helped me that really touched my life so that's all i'd say on
Proverbs 31, um, the Passion Translation. This is the Passion Translation. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in another video. Bye.